Abe Lincoln Loved Animals by Ellen Jackson. Long ago in the wooded hollows of Kentucky lived a young boy who loved animals. In the spring, the boy, Abraham Lincoln, discovered a mother fox with her babies. In the autumn, he watched raccoons gather acorns in the woods. From an early age, Abraham saw the animals felt pain and pleasure and had lives of their own. The boy's family lived on a farm, first in Kentucky and later in Indiana. Abraham and his sister Sarah fetched water, chopped firewood, and helped their mother plant seeds and grind corn. Abraham's papa often hunted rabbits or deer. Hunting was a way of life for those who lived on the frontier. Everyone worked hard to put food on the table. When Abraham grew older, his family expected him to help feed the family. One day, he spotted a flock of wild turkeys. He took aim with a rifle and shot one of the birds. But the sight of the dying turkey filled him with sorrow. I will never hunt large animals again, he thought to himself. And he didn't. Other children would sometimes hurt animals, but not Abraham. Once at school, Abraham saw his friends putting red hot coals on the back of a turtle. He had to speak up and stop them. Cruelty to animals is wrong, he told the children. Even an ant values its life. When he had grown into a young man, Abraham moved to Springfield, Illinois and worked as a lawyer. When he was only 20, he made a speech that so impressed everyone it was printed in the newspaper. Important people began to notice him, but Abraham still took, him, took time to help animals. One day, he and his friends were riding in the country. As Abraham passed a grove of wild plum and crab apple trees, he stopped. Two baby birds had been blown like leaves from their nest. He dismounted, gathered up the birds, shinnied up the tree, and put them back. What foolishness, said Abraham's friend Joshua Speed. Now you've gone and ruined your good suit. I could not have slept well tonight if I had not saved those birds, said Abraham quietly. He didn't care if his friends laughed at him. At a dance in 1839, Abraham met a friendly, spunky girl named Mary Todd. Three years later, they were married. During the next 11 years, the couple had four boys, Robert, Eddie, Willie, and Tad. Abraham found room in his house for cats, kittens, and dogs. He and the boys liked to walk in the woods looking for insects, butterflies, and rocks. Abraham traveled to nearby towns to work with people who needed a lawyer. He rode old Bob who was probably his favorite animal companion. After a ride, Abraham would examine Bob's feet, give him a carrot, and rub his nose. A floppy-eared dog named Fido came to live with the Lincoln family. Abraham and Fido would often walk down the street with the dog carrying a parcel in his mouth. When Abraham stopped for a haircut at Billy's Barbershop, Fido waited patiently outside, unless a group of children came by. Then Fido jumped and played until Abraham was ready to go home. Abraham served a term in the United States House of Representatives. In 1860, he became a candidate for President of the United States. When he won the election, the Lincoln family prepared to move to the White House in Washington, D.C. Sadly, Abraham decided that Fido would not accompany the family. The train trip would be long and difficult, and the Lincoln family had a large amount of baggage to carry. Abraham asked a neighboring family, the Rolls, to take Fido. He gave them the horsehair sofa that was the dog's favorite piece of furniture. You must promise me, said Abraham to the Roll boys, not to scold Fido for entering the house with muddy paws. He should never be tied up alone in the backyard, and whenever he scratches at the door, he must be let in. 
Fido's new family agreed to everything. How could they say no to the new president? Before the Lincoln family left for Washington, they had a picture taken of Fido so they would never forget him. Photography was still new, and this was the first picture ever taken of a presidential pet. In Washington, the Lincoln family filled their new home with pets, rabbits, dogs, cats, and even a couple of goats. Tad, Abraham's youngest son, once hitched the goats to a chair and drove them through the White House, scattering a group of women attending a reception. A guest noticed how the president pampered the family cat, who sat next to him during dinner. Don't you think it is shameful for Mr. Lincoln to feed Tabby with a gold fork? Mrs. Lincoln asked the guest. If the gold fork was good enough for President Buchanan, I think it's good enough for Tabby, said Abraham Lincoln. The new president had many problems. In 1860, the United States consisted of some states that, were per that permitted slavery and others that didn't. Slavery was a terrible evil that allowed white people to own black people. Slaves were made to work hard and were often treated cruelly. Abraham Lincoln had promised to ban slavery. In the territories that might someday become states, I believe this government cannot endure permanently half slave and half free, he said. When Abraham Lincoln was elected, many of the southern slaveholding states seceded or left the Union to form their own government. But Abraham Lincoln was willing to fight to keep the country together. Soon the United States was plunged into a terrible civil war. Abraham Lincoln realized that slavery must end if the Union was to be saved. In 1863, he issued the Emancipation Proclamation freeing all the slaves in the rebel states. Some people hated the president for this act. Others thought he was a great man. Abraham Lincoln had courageously committed the United States government to the cause of freedom. The war continued on. On the battlefield, the dead were heaped as high as autumn leaves. Abraham's face was haggard and gray with constant worry. The president found comfort in the company of animals. On a visit to the headquarters of General Grant, leader of the Union Army, he came upon three tiny kittens whose mother, whose mother had recently died. He picked them up, stroked them, and said to the colonel in charge, I hope you will see that these poor little motherless waifs are given plenty of milk and treated kindly. The colonel promised the kittens would be well treated. Despite the war, Abraham was never too busy for his boys. One year, just before Christmas, Tad found a huge turkey wandering on the White House grounds. Tad named him Jack, looped a piece of string around his neck, and led him around to meet the White House staff. I see you've met your Christmas dinner, said the cook. What? Was Jack to be killed and served for Christmas? Tad, Tad ran to the president's office where his father was in an important meeting. Papa, said Tad, please don't let them kill Jack. He's a good turkey and doesn't deserve to die. Abraham listened quietly. Long ago, he had shot a turkey. Perhaps the regret he had felt then welled up in his heart. But this time, things would end differently. He is a good turkey, Tad, said Abraham. And I'll pardon him. After all, I am the president. Then Abraham Lincoln wrote out a presidential pardon for Jack, changing him from a meal into a member of the family. In 1864, President Lincoln was elected to serve another four-year term, but in April 1865, a few days after the Civil War had ended and the nation was reunited, Abraham Lincoln was shot and killed by an assassin. People all over the country mourned the death of their beloved leader. When President Lincoln was buried in Springfield, Illinois, old Bob, wearing a blanket with silver fringe, walked behind the funeral procession. Fido, too, was brought back to his old home to greet the mourners. Today, people everywhere honor Abraham Lincoln, the president who saved the Union and issued the Emancipation Proclamation. Abraham's love for animals lives on. Each Thanksgiving, the president of the United States pardons a turkey, just as Abraham Lincoln did more than 100 years ago. 
Abraham Lincoln's kind heart had room for all creatures, great and small. A Native American legend says that when humans die, they are greeted by all the animals they befriended when they were alive. If so, voices from the air, the water, and the land must have welcomed Abraham Lincoln home.